Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about implants. What types of implants are there? Which are the best and which ones can you do without? That and more after the intro. We already know that implants come in different classifications like rare, epic, or legendary. However, we often find ourselves in discussions about which implants are good and which ones can be skipped. Let's shed some light on it. Generally, there are three different categories. Implants for weapons, for specific mechs, and universal implants that affect cooldown, duration, or mech damage. And unlike mech-specific implants that can only be used on a particular mech, they can be used on multiple if not all, mechs. Let's start with weapon implants. For weapons, there are usually between two and four different implants. Some weapons, like the Storm Rack, for example, require three implants to perform well, while others, like the Railgun, only require two implants. Weapons that cause splash damage or melee weapons, with the exception of the Revoker, the Repeater, and the Embergoon, always require three implants to perform well. For weapons that benefit from splash damage, these would be the Damage Implant, the Reload Time, and the Damage Radius Enhancement Implant. For melee weapons, the Range Implant must not be missing, as otherwise you have too little range to effectively use the weapon. For weapons that require only two implants like the Revoker, for example, you can't skip any of the implants. Especially for snipers or beam weapons, but also for some automatic weapons, you can skip the Range Implant. Of course, there are exceptions. For example, playing the Fragment Gun on Seeker, even though the Fragment Gun is a melee weapon, you can skip the range implant here. And for weapons with more than four implants, you should skip one implant anyway. For the Storm Rack, for example, this would be the implant that increases damage when shooting at an enemy shield. But these are individual exceptional cases. In general, the range implant can be omitted for snipers and beam weapons, as these weapons cover most of the maps in Mech Arena, even without this implant. Then there are implants that specifically relate to a mech. This means that you can only play these implants on this one mech. For Guardian, for example, there are the System Crash Range and the System Crash Width. When we talk about mech-specific implants, it must be understood that it is really individual when considering whether to skip or apply an implant. It always depends on which implant you want to use and on which mech. Therefore, there is actually no standard here. Example. For Bastion, you don't need either the Explosion Radius Implant or the Explosion Damage Implant. Of course, these are strong implants that bring advantages, but they are not necessary to use Bastion effectively. For Seeker, however, it's different. Here you even need two mech-specific implants to play the mech as effectively as possible. These are the Warp Range and the Warp Bonus Damage, it makes a huge difference whether you have these two implants installed on your pilot for Seeker or not. So you see, it's very much dependent on the mech whether you should use mech-specific implants or not. However, it must be said that the majority of mechs do not require mech-specific implants. This brings us to the last category of implants to discuss. The universally applicable mech implants. These are implants that you can use on multiple, if not all, mechs. There are three of them. The Mech Ability Damage Implant is not applicable to all mechs, but only to those that deal direct damage through their ability, such as Kill Shot, Nomad, Cheetah, and so on. The Ability Duration Implant is also usable on many mechs, but not on all. This implant increases the duration of an ability that lasts over a certain period of time, such as the Panther's Stasis Wall or the Juggernaut's Shield. However, this implant would not be usable on Killshot or Nomad, as their ability only causes damage once and then it's over. Therefore, this implant is also only usable on certain mechs. However, neither the Mech Ability Damage Implant nor the Ability Duration Implant is tied to a specific mech and can be applied to multiple mechs, which is a clear advantage over the mech-specific implants. Lastly, we have the Cooldown Implant. This implant is the only one that works on all mechs except Sentinel. 
It reduces the cooldown, that is, the time in which you cannot use your mech ability after triggering it by up to 30%. And every mech has a cooldown, which is why this implant is usable on every mech. Sentinel is an exception here. Due to the fact that the cooldown for Sentinel's shield can self-reduce depending on your health points up to 4 seconds, this mech is the only one that does not benefit from the cooldown implant. But what is the strongest implant in Mech Arena? Due to their flexible usability, the universally applicable implants are the strongest group in the realm of implants. The strongest or best implant is the cooldown implant. It is the most elemental, important, and most commonly used implant in Mech Arena and is installed on almost every pilot. Whether you have this implant or not can be decisive in many situations, which is why the implant is indispensable from any hangar. But what do you think? Write it in the comments. See you in another video, and until then, take care.